My name is Matt Hopper and this is a short film about me and my relationship with the Bricknell Avenue council estate in Hull, England. It's been my home for about 13 years and it's one of the most ordinary places on earth. For most of these years I was unemployed and at a strange point in my life I realised I wasn't young anymore. I realised I'd messed up and I realised I didn't care anymore. And that scared me, but it excited me too. This small plastic hook thing has come to symbolise hope. It's been there for about seven years, and I often make detours on my walks around the estate to make sure it's still there. The thought that one day I'll look and it'll be gone terrifies me, a harbinger of some terrible doom. It first became important in my darkest, emptiest days of unemployment. Knowing it was there gave me a sense of permanence and comfort. It's just one of those stupid little things you attach significance to when you have nothing else. I used to think I might take it and hide it somewhere more secluded. But deep down I knew that would be cheating fate and could only bring disaster upon me. A few years back I looked but couldn't see it. I felt upset as though a period of my life had ended, but I didn't despair as I once thought I might, and it mysteriously reappeared a few weeks later. I felt as though I was being tested. This is the bridge. It's been there all my life, just at the edge of my awareness. It overlooks Appleton Primary, my first school, and my junior school, Wyke, is a few blocks away. My senior school, the whole grammar school, once stood in the field there, until it was demolished a few years ago. In 2005 I was placed on a three month long program by the unemployment service. It was located in a cold drafty hut on a bleak industrial estate and I was required to break up crates, denail the wood, then turn it into planters, bird boxes and such. It was hard work. I didn't get on with the people there and it was cold. I was basically in prison, doing time for a crime I did not commit. I was so unhappy. I laughed crazily at the absurdity of it all. How the fuck had my life come to this? What the fuck was I doing here? I walked down this path past the bridge every day on my way there and it occurred to me that in all these years I'd never crossed it. I studied the houses on the other side. They look quite different to ours. I imagine crossing the bridge and exploring this new lost half of the estate. The strange urban ordinariness I'd see there. A parallel universe where everything is just slightly weird and unfamiliar. I decided I had to save the crossing until it felt right. I knew this difficult time would pass and the bridge reminded me of this every day. I can't walk by these cat's paw prints without stopping to look. This concrete is quite ancient, as old as the estate itself, and I find the prints quite sad and poignant. I sometimes try to forensically recreate the cat's journey on that lost day decades ago by analysing the direction and depth of the prints. I wonder what season it was, what the weather was like, and if the workmen noticed. They remind me of the billions of unspectacular events that happen then sink without trace and make up life. This is why I once wanted to be an archaeologist, to uncover links to the past like these, back to a time when my parents were children and this place was being transformed from West Bulls Farm to this housing estate for the post-war baby boomers. I like the thought that these overlooking mature trees would have witnessed it all, as they're watching me now. This line of scrubby little trees is a relic of the old farm. It's an echo of one of the field boundaries and used to form part of a hedgerow. These little rows run all across the estate and this one appears again across the road in a green space between the houses. I've tried to match them up with the 1890s Ordnance Survey map and Google Earth. My parents remember these fields and used to play here in the 50s. They called them bushy fields. 
This is our estate's very own stone circle. It's not aligned on any solar, lunar or astral events. It's not situated on any ley lines and no shamanic rituals have ever been performed here. Well, that's not strictly true. The council placed it here after the row of shops which previously occupied the site exploded. I think I may have psychically foretold this event. A few months before the explosion, I went for a late night walk around the estate. I stopped before the shop which would blow up and took a picture of myself trying to levitate. I posted this on my blog and wrote a poem about death and resurrection. Fortunately, only one person died in this huge explosion, an Egyptian who was in the shop, which I thought was strange as the explosion occurred at about 3am, and I had a theory that he could have been an ancient Egyptian time traveller sacrificed to open a wormhole back to Egypt in 2000 BC where the pyramids have been constructed by aliens to travel through to Hull 2000 AD creating some kind of mad time loop. They could have carried vital information for us about a mass global awakening which would start here in Hull but we'll never know as an agent within the council placed this stone circle here to plug the hole to disrupt the quantum field and prevent any more aliens warping space time here in Hull. It's become one of my favourite places to come and think, especially at night. It's my little temple, open to the stars. It's about 4,000 years younger than most stone circles, but just as important to me. This realisation made me think more deeply about what makes a site sacred. This is where Hull ends. Back there, the bricks, mortar and tarmac of Hull stretch for miles. Turn 180 degrees and there are fields, woods and medieval villages. The council put this earth rampart here last year. It's quite imposing and there's even a ditch along the inside. They put it here to stop the travellers camping on the field. But I like to think it's to stop the folk of Hull escaping into Yorkshire. It made me think of Julius Caesar's defences around Elysia in the Great Siege the last stand of the free tribes of Celtic Gaul against the might of Rome. It's a sad sign of the times. I prefer boundaries to be fluid and ill-defined. I need to feel free. I need to explore. And I can live with the occasional traveller incursion. I suppose this is the price we pay for our modern urban utopia. And besides, when has humanity ever been truly free? <laughs>